we have seen chaos in the A&Es. The trolleys have been jammed together. The patients have been toe to toe. The scandal of closed public wards has already been mentioned. But no deputy has yet mentioned that there were cases of other empty beds during this crisis too, sometimes just hundreds of metres away from the chaos in the A&Es. I am talking about the empty beds in private hospitals and in, pub in private wards. What a scandal that this is so when public patients suffer. When the COH purchased 10 private beds at the Matter Private in Mahan on the 7th of January, it made national headlines. There were 10 beds to buy, and the same was done elsewhere. But how many beds lay idle during the crisis over the last fortnight? We don't know, because the private hospitals are under no obligation to release the information. We have an anecdotal information. Fergus Finlay, in an interesting article in the Irish Examiner, described how a majority of the beds in a private ward he spent time in recently were empty. We need to reverse the austerity health cuts of recent times. That means thousands of new beds in public hospitals. But we also need a planned, rational use of resources to meet the challenges of public health care, including emergencies. That means putting all of the country's health resources at the disposal of society, which in turn means nationalisation of the private hospitals and of those private beds. We must fight for every bed. At Bandon General Hospital in County Cork, there are currently 13 beds not in use because of a dispute on staffing levels. If the HSE were to simply hire one extra nurse and two extra healthcare assistants, those beds could be brought into play more or less immediately. The three extra staff should be hired immediately. At Cove Community Hospital in County Cork, 44 beds are currently in jeopardy because of the hospital's financial viability under a Section 39 model. Upgrade the hospital to a HSE hospital and the beds would be guaranteed. But the HSE won't do this as it would mean increasing pay rates. It is ludicrous to put 44 beds in jeopardy for this reason. The hospital should be made into a HSE hospital, the wages should be increased and these vital 44 beds should be saved. The European Commission says there will be a global shortfall of 1 million healthcare workers by 2020 and that 600,000 of these will be nurses and midwives. Nurses and midwives are part of a globalised labour market and USI recently found 92% of student nurses and midwives considering emigration, largely for reasons relating to pay. Last year, according to the INMO, 1,400 of 2,000 nurses and midwives who left the HSE did so because they resigned. Many went to Britain, Australia or Canada. Many went to the private sector where pay is higher to the tune of thousands of extra euro per annum. It is clear we will continue to have a crisis holding on to our nurses until such time as they are granted very significant pay rises. As a Solidarity TD, I consider myself a workers' representative in Parliament and have made a point during this crisis to talk to hospital workers and listen to their point of view. In Cork, I have listened to stories of wards crammed full of potential flu victims with just three or four thermometers at hand for the entire ward. I have heard stories of Dynamaps so frayed and worn that attempts to take accurate blood pressure readings were hampered. I have spoken to ambulance staff who have completed 14 hour shifts without time to break for a proper meal. In general, I have heard stories of frontline workers under pressure from a crisis, but then put under even greater uh, pressure by a shortage of resources, including human resources. In conclusion, Count Corla. I believe that this crisis has made the case more clearly than speaking could ever do for an Irish National Health Service unshackled by cuts and privatisation. For sure, there is a crisis in the NHS in the UK, but that must be dealt with by going forward to the original principles of its founders, not by going back to the public-private model which we have been dealing with here. So I say reverse the bed cuts, 
pay the nurses and health staff a living wage, invest in primary care and establish now an Irish National Health Service unshackled by cuts or privatisation.